Assalamu alaikum, welcome to Heart to Heart. My name is Madiha and we're joined by Sister Masa Majafar, who is a resident alama at Samoa Mosque and she also has qualifications in counselling. She's counselled hundreds of couples, individuals and families on various issues and topics. And Heart to Heart is a show that's all about our viewer. You can also email in with your questions, any problems you're facing at university, school or at home. Um, on heart to heart at safiratv.com and Sister Masama will try her best to help you tackle your issues on a practical as well as a spiritual level. So thank you Sister Masama for joining us today. Um, we've had loads of people email in um, with various issues and topics. Um, I'm going to go straight into it as, as always. Um, here I've got someone that's emailed in uh, with quite a sad story um, saying that my father has left my mother and me and my siblings to live with another woman. He travels the world and goes to places he shouldn't. It really upsets me the way he has just tossed my mother and my family aside, but more than anything, I want to know if his sins will affect our lives. He used to bring haram earnings into the house. What should I do? How should I console my poor mother and siblings? That is really, really sad. Yeah, and it's sad that this person wants to take, like, console, console mother and yeah. siblings on him or her, herself. Yeah. Um, it's, it's very sad. Um, mm. She's specifically asking about whether the sins will affect, uh, the, the father's sins will affect them. The answer is no. Um, the, the sins of each person is on themselves. Mm. What about the haram so, earnings and the food the, that they're eating? Again, like if you know, it, they didn't know about it, yeah. then it's not that, you know, it, it's not going to, God's just, he's not going to, you yeah. know, um, blame them for something that they did not know. Yeah. It's all his doing. If he brought haram earnings into the house, if they did know about it and they encouraged it, then that's a different matter. Mm. Um, so it, it depends on uh, what situa what the situation was. But again, it's up to him to provide for his family. Yeah. The fact that he's just walked away from this family, she doesn't say how old the children, you know, how old her and her siblings are. But the the onus is on the father to take care of the children, not on the mother. Mm -hmm. Um, financially, the father should be supporting the, the, the children and the mother for taking care of the children. Mm. So if the, if the children are living with the mother, then the father should be supporting his wife because he's take, she's doing his job for him. Mm. So, you know, he's, he's responsible for all of that, which he's obviously not doing according to this, um, this letter. Mm -hmm. But um, I think the, the main things that she said was the, 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 act, the concept of the sins um, and the haram earnings. She says, how can I, how do I console my mother um, and my siblings? I think it's about trying to move forward. Hmm. What's happened has happened. If you keep dwelling on it, yeah. then it becomes a very negative cycle of self-pity and you know, hmm. you just end up wallowing in your own self-pity. Hmm. Uh, so it's a matter of, okay, it's happened. Um, what did we learn from it? Hmm. Where's the growth from it? Hmm. Um, God doesn't hasn't abandoned us. Mm -hmm. You know, my, uh, he may have, my father may have done, but God hasn't. Yeah. So, uh, you know, he will take care of me. Mm -hmm. I always tell my children that, you know, when when they, I used to pray for God to give me enough life to take um, care of my children, mm -hmm. because you know what would happen to my children if I died. Yeah. And it suddenly struck me how, you know, how arrogant that was mm -hmm. because. I thought I was taking care of them, but mm. it's not me. It's God and God taking, choosing to use me to take care of them. Yeah. And if I do die, He'll, you know, get, have someone else take care of them. He's not going to abandon, you know, His creation. Yeah. So if you know, if she, she can understand that and believe that yeah. truly, then she can actually then help her siblings mm. um, and her mother come to that realization as well. Yeah. So and you know maybe. Obviously, as the father has left, but if he used to bring her arm earnings into the house, maybe in some way it's you know they've moved away from her arm, yeah. her arm and the negative and, earnings and, the, and the negative, negative of all that. that. Yeah. yeah. So maybe it's I mean in that way maybe it's a good thing. Yeah. It's obviously a lot more com complicated than that, but you have to yeah. I guess try and find the good the in every situation. Yeah. yeah, of course. Right. And 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 then actually sort of building a life which doesn't revolve around him at all mm. you know so doing things that you know they may maybe used to do with him so going mm. out and going on holidays and things and um i i don't know what the money situation is now that he's gone yeah but you know they um i'm sure that you know if, if they belong to a community they can get help yeah um because um 
as a woman, you know, you have the right to ask for help. Uh, you yeah. shouldn't have to go out to work. Yeah. So that that's there as well. But it's it's actually just putting the past in the past. Mm. It's happened. You can't control what other people do. Yeah. But you can control your reactions to what other people do. Mm. And and knowing that God hasn't abandoned me and there is growth in this for me and. You know, maybe I needed to go through this to to realize how strong I was. Maybe I needed to go through this to get closer to God. Mm. Um, maybe it brought m me and my siblings closer together, me and my mother together. There, there's always a positive that will come out of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. No, thank you for that. Um, I've got another question here that's saying uh, I'm a middle-aged man, been married for 20 years, and seeking a second wife. I feel that I have a lot to offer a new wife, especially when you consider how many women are not finding husbands. The problem is that my current wife categorically refuses to be part of a polygamous marriage. For the last couple of years, I have grown very close to a divorced lady who has children of her own. I want to look after her, but without upsetting my current wife. How should I go about handling this? I would ask um, the brother whether he seems to... He's, he, what he's saying makes you think that the intentions are all very pure. Mm. There are lots of there are lots of women who don't have husbands. Mm. I have a lot to offer, mm. um, you know. So why wouldn't I? And and again, God actually allows it. In fact, He encourages it because mm. the verse in the Holy Quran um, actually starts off with more rather than one. So it says, "Marry." I, I can't remember. It's four, three, or two. I, I can't remember the numbering. Mm. Um, and if you do not, if you if you feel you cannot keep justice, then marry only one. Mm. So God starts off with the plural before he goes into the one. Hmm. So it, it, some of the ulama say that it means that God actually wants men to marry more than one. Hmm. In the same way, for example, if you invited me to dinner and I said to you, um, yeah, I'd like to have a starter, a main meal and dessert, but if you can't do it, then just make, just make the main meal. So it's not even if you can't keep just, if you feel you can't. So it's, it's very um, important that he, you know, a, a man before he goes down this route actually really self-evaluates himself and thinks, can I keep justice between the two wives? Mm. What is my intention behind marrying a second wife? Now, he says it's because there are so many unmarried women and he has a lot to offer. Mm. Yes, he's right. There are lots of unmarried women. And it would be great if, you know, men could marry more than one and keep justice. He says he has a lot to offer. What does that, what does he mean by that? Is it financially? Well, you don't have to marry uh, someone to financially support them. You can financially support them without marriage. Mm. Is it actually uh, the time that he has, the emotional support that he has? You know, mm. how good a husband is he with the first wife mm. that he feels that he can have a second wife? Yeah. Um, he talks about the fact that he's become very close to this divorced woman. Now, did the intention of marriage, was it there before he met this divorced woman? because he saw the bigger picture and he felt that there was a need and, and, and he has a lot to offer. Or once he'd got close to this divorce woman, now he's thinking, oh yeah, there is a need and I have a lot to offer. Hmm. Do you see the difference? Yeah. So here he's trying to okay... Trying to justify it. Yes, and yeah. then maybe the intentions aren't as pure as he has made himself believe or yeah. he's trying to make up other people believe yeah that only he knows i i can't judge his intention mm. only he knows what but you know, if the first she's... wife is categorically refusing uh, i don't know whether he's asked her or spoken to her about it but it's quite quite a so if if you're looking at the fic if there yeah. is no um marriage contract mm. which specifies anything and if the if the woman that he's going to marry is is also a shia muslim mm -hmm. then he doesn't need fic wise need the first wife's permission mm. Uh, akhlaq is a totally different thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you concentrate on the fic, you usually, generally, relationships tend to fall apart. Mm -hmm. So I could sit here and say, fic-wise, as a wife, I don't have to go out to work. Mm. I don't, you know, I, I don't have to clean the house. I don't have to look after the children. I don't have to do anything. Mm. Um, and that is my right as, as a wife. Mm. But the relationship wouldn't flourish. It wouldn't work. Mm. You know, you, you can't just rely on the fic. There, there has to be an akhlaki, a moral element that comes into it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if his wife is dead set against it and he does go down the fic route and marries, yes, he may not have committed a sin as such, but will he still be able to maintain both relationships? Yeah. Um, will she feel that she's lost her trust in him um, and, he, you know, she can no longer 
have a stable relationship with him how is he going to maintain that what about his own children from the first wife if you you know if he's get marrying this um divorcee with with children to help support her children what about his other you know if he has children from his first wife how detrimental will it be to them mm. but he does say that he d- he wants to look after this lady but without upsetting his current wife yeah. so there are i mean so what what yeah. sort of help does she need yeah um again is it financial she, he doesn't you know what worries me is the fact that he says he's got very close to her mm. how did that come about mm. was it done in a halal way was it not how you know the fact that he found himself in a situation where he's got close to another woman when really it should only be his wife that he's close to mm. when it comes to the opposite sex mm. you know the opposite gender so you know he needs to again reevaluate that and think about why how did i get into a situation where i have become so close to another another woman mm. that i'm actually now thinking i need i need to marry this woman yeah um and and if through this marriage what are the effects that it's going to happen have on his wife mm. and you know this isn't something that you, you think okay she'll come round because it's it's not something that you know it she'll come round and she'll get okay with it and, and then you move on because it's something that's going to be in her face all the time yeah it it's you know it will affect their whole relationship it yeah. will affect everything in their relationship mm. so it it's a huge step to take i'm yeah. i'm not saying it's it's wrong mm. what i'm saying is that he needs to first think about what his intention is for mm. doing this mm. is is it as pure as he's, he's convincing himself yeah but how many people would help a lady like that who do, who 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 doesn't technically mean anything to them in terms of you know you're saying if he wants to help her financially he could do that but would but it may not be just financial help that she you know you think about it you know if you've if you've been married and you've got kids mm. it's not just financial help you need mm. you know if you're divorced you 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 want to have that emotional support especially I mean, I don't know children. what it is that he wants. That he wants when he says yeah. he wants to look after her again. I don't know what it yeah. means. So. And, and what she's expecting as well. And yeah. and then also has she has he asked her about yeah. how comfortable she is being a second wife? Yeah. Um. You know how would it work? Will he have two homes? Mm. Will he be able to afford to have two homes? Mm. Um. Again, we're assuming that he's financially well off. Maybe he is not. Yeah. Maybe he he's thinking of giving them giving her emotional support. Mm. But what about the finance of it all? How is he going to you know Kate? cope with two two mortgages to to rent or whatever it is um taking care of his children and her children mm. you know all of these things have to be taken into how much time does he have yeah you know does he have time to spend with his wife and and the new wife to be mm. will he have time to be a dad to all the kids there's yeah. all of these things that come into it mm. so you know and what if they have kids of their own as well that's another added pressure mm. so i think he needs to put aside his feelings for this this um divorced woman that he has mm. and actually um concentrate on on the marriage that he already has that mm. he's committed to and think about the effects of having a second wife you know, on this marriage and weigh out the pros and cons and then you know sit down and have a conversation with his first wife before he does anything because if mm. he's going to do it without um having a conversation mm. it's going to blow up in his face. Yeah, he needs to see whether it's worth the risk in that way. Yeah, I'm not saying he needs to have her permission, but yeah. he needs to have a conversation so he hasn't gone behind her back. I yeah. think that's really really important. Mm. So if he is going down this route, if he's decided this is what he's going to do, mm. he needs to explain to her why and he needs to sort of then hear her out and and you know, um listen to what she's worried about and mm. how then she feels sees it working if if at all. Mm. Okay, thank you very much for that um answer. I think I hope that t- helped uh, our viewers as well. Um I've got a question here where a lady, lady sent in saying, "My husband and I usually get, get on very well and there are no major issues in our marriage, alhamdulillah. However, recently he raised the topic of moving to Iran for the purpose of studying at the Hawza in Qom. The thing is, I feel very settled here in the UK. The kids are in school, I have a great job." etc i want to know if i am islamically obliged to go with him if i don't listen to if i don't listen to and obey him will I, will i be committing a sin first of all alhamdulillah that they have a good relationship yeah. <laughs> um also think about what you're willing to do for that good relationship to continue mm. how much of a sacrifice you can make um what are the pros and cons of going to iran i think rather than looking at it are you um islamically obliged look at it from a um your relationship perspective mm-hmm. you know she starts off saying she, that she has a good relationship now you know that is that is a, a great alhamdulillah mm. 
you know, um, usually people write in to say how difficult the relationship yeah. is, you know. Um, so the fact that she's already found someone who she ha she, she's she been able to build a good relationship with and they have children as well. Um, what are the pros and cons of going to Iran for herself, for mm. her children and for her husband? Mm. They're a family unit, so it's mm. not just one person, but all of them. She's He's looking at it from the perspective of he wants to study Hosa. She's looking at it from the perspective of she's settled here. Mm. Um, she's obviously you know built a life which she's comfortable with. Mm. But they need to look at it from all perspectives. So how would it benefit her if she did go to Iran? How, what would be the negatives of, not, of going to Iran? How would it benefit the children? What would be the negatives of the children? Again, how old are the children? If mm. they're older, then, you know, to pull them out of school and take them to, to, to another country. And then how would they come back and, and come, you know, how long is, is he planning to go? Is it, uh, you know, does he want to go there and live there forever and ever? Or does he just want to try out for a year? Um, maybe they can try going there for a summer holiday mm. and actually experience living there because it it's might not as be, easy as it seems yeah, sometimes. it might be yeah. something that he's, you know, romanticized in his mind mm. and it might not actually play out the way he's thinking yeah um what are the financial Im you know, implications of that you know because he'd have to leave his work here and if he's studying in hosa how what earnings are going to come in yeah do they have enough savings to live off that there's lots of things that they need to um talk about i think maybe if she starts um having those conversations rather than blocking him and saying no this is something i don't want end of story yeah so then what happens is you know her ego and his ego come into conflict and yeah nothing's resolved mm. so rather than that saying okay this is what you want mm. and i understand that you know you really want this let's look at practically how it would work out let's see the, you know how what would be the effect of it on the children what would be the effect of it on me and then you know we can sit down and discuss it so she's not saying she's going to go mm. what she's saying is i'm willing to consider it and yeah. talk about it, mm. um, look at the bigger picture, mm. and, and I think that would already sort of you know uh, mellow him a little bit, and then he may be open to other suggestions. Um, you know, they might decide that you know he wants to try it for a little while, and, and then maybe call his family if he feels that he's it's something he wants to do. Mm. Um, they might decide to go there for a, for a few months in the summer holidays and try it out. There's lots of different ways of, of you know, working around it. Mm. Um, rather than just, no, this is something I don't want and that's it, because it, marriage doesn't work like that. And mm -hmm. then if he sees her compromising, then hopefully he'll compromise. Um, you know, they can come to, this, to the um, idea of maybe him going there to study and then coming back every so often to be with his family, but then that's a part-time dad for the kids yeah. is that something you really want for your children how will yeah. it affect the children how will you cope having a part-time husband yeah um what about his needs mm. and how will he cope being away from you know you and the family yeah um you may actually turn around and from the previous question say okay you know what you're allowed for wives maybe you go there and get married to someone there and live you know spend some time with her there and then come back here and spend some time with me here and we're both happy because you've got what you want yeah. and you've got a wife there and a family there and, and I've got what I want and I've got, and, and it works for some people. Mm. So that's, an, you know, th there's lots of different ways of looking at it and lots of different um, perspectives, different uh, things that they can talk about. Mm. Uh, before. And, and, and she's asked here, is she Islamically obliged to go with him? And if she doesn't listen to him, will she be committing a sin? From a fiqh perspective, yeah. um, and I'm talking only purely fiqh, um, he has to financially provide for her um, in the way that she's used to. But where he does that is is his choice. So if he decides to do it here or in Iran, that's that's up to him as long as he's financially providing for her. Then she can't say no to him mm -hmm. um, unless she can prove that it is dangerous or unbearable hardship for her. Okay. Um, otherwise, yes, she does have to go with him. She. Um, she would be committing a sin by saying no to him. Okay, but, but if he gives obviously her the there's, choice, there's the, no. Obviously, if yeah. he gives her a choice, and then, then that's yeah. that's up to her. But there's the the akhlaqi aspect of in a relationship, um, the fact that they have a good relationship. You know that that, that communication and conversations have to happen mm. where they discuss how it affects them as a family, each individual, and as a family as a whole. Mm. Would it be of benefit for the whole family to go? Yeah. You know, to make this move. Yeah, I mean, I guess as you said, it's about just about a conversation. If he if he's basically forcing her to go and she goes over there and she's resentful and bitter and he's not going to be able to study he's not going to be happy yeah. either and he's so not going to be able to study so it's, it's you know it's, it's sort of realizing that you've got to compromise both of them need to compromise yeah you know if this is something that he 
it's his lifelong dream, yeah. then you know maybe she can compromise a, a year or so for him. Mm. Um, and you know if or if it's something that you know she really really can't handle, maybe he can say, look, you know what, let's let me go for a little while. Or there's so many different ways they can work around. Mm. But it's about having those conversations again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know some families that have gone for a few years, come back for a few years, and gone back again, yeah. or have worked around it in different ways. So um, thank you for that. I hope that the couple are able to work inshallah. their way through it, inshallah. inshallah. And, um, you know, um, I hope they've been able to benefit from your advice. Um, thanks for that. We're going to move on to the next question. I've got someone here that's uh, messaged saying, for many years I have suffered from hormonal acne and it's made me lose a lot of confidence. For this reason, I wear, I wear makeup so that I can face the world. But Islamically, women are not allowed to leave the house with makeup on. I've tried every potion, lotion and prescription medicine, medicine, medication you can name, but it hasn't helped that much. How can I face the world without makeup? Please help. You feel sorry for the girl, yeah. don't you? It's, it's quite sad that mm. um, one, that you know, she, she has this um, problem with acne and secondly, that her confidence is based on her looks. Mm. I think that, that's quite sad. Um, I think that's something that I would encourage her to look into and try to sort of build her confidence in who she is rather than the way she looks. Mm. Um, but the, the question is actually specifically asking about um, the, con the, the um, idea of wearing makeup. Mm. Um, the actual fic is not that you can't, a woman can't leave the house with makeup. It's, you, you know, you can't... Um, make yourself um, wear things that will make you look prettier than you are mm -hmm. um, or, or you know sort of um, uh, make yourself stand out okay. in, in the things society that aren't that already living, okay in the society that you're living in so for example if I was living maybe in Kum yeah um, you know in the Hosa atmosphere where no one was wearing makeup and I decided to wear even a little bit, mm. it would make me stand out. Mm. Whereas living here in the West, if mm. I was wearing a little bit to make myself look presentable, presentable yeah. it wouldn't stand out mm. and therefore it wouldn't be against my hijab. Mm. So okay. I, I, one is my knee for doing it mm. and the second one is whether I actually stand out or not. Mm. Um, I think those things have to... So her knee for doing it is to um, hide the, the acne that she has mm. um, to make herself look presentable, which mm. is what she said. Um, and if, as long as she puts a small amount which doesn't make her stand out, um, so she's not going out with bright red lipstick and lots of you know um, eyeshadow and blusher and things like that, mm. or you know putting the tip on her you know uh, <laughs> eyeliner. eyeliner and things yeah. like that, then yeah. then I don't think there's anything wrong with it, yeah. um, fit wise. Yeah, um, I don't. Think but actually, I mean, from a, from a I mean, non-Islamic perspective, I would have thought that. The more makeup you put on, the worse your skin yeah, gets. Yeah, it will. So, yeah. so um, that, that's another issue in itself. Yeah. But I, I think it's just uh, whether she's allowed to wear it yeah. to to go out, yeah. uh, maybe when she's um, at work and things like that. But yeah, the more she uses, it, it's going to make the situation even worse. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder whether she's going to try to visit a specialist or yeah, you know, actually um, tackle the actual go, issue. Go to the actual doctor and, and get an mm. um, appointment with a specialist because I think you know, um, if she could get a special, uh, an appointment with a dermatologist, that would really help because there must be something that she can use. I, she's, she says she's tried lots of lotions, and, but those might be over-the-counter lotions over -the -counter, and things yeah. like that. And for something that's quite severe, she may need mm. specialist help, uh, yeah. maybe prescribed medication, yeah. um, which, you know, you can use. And also a lot of it's to do with your hormone imbalance as well. So, yeah. you know, they may give her something which may not um, clear up the... Uh, uh, you know, the, to put on, on the face to clear up the acne, but it may be to sort of settle the hormones, yeah. which will then again help with the acne. Yeah, yeah. But it's realizing that, you know, there's lots of things. So there's the thick aspect mm. um, where she can wear, as long as her intention is to ensure that it's to make herself presentable and not mm. to make herself beautiful, mm -hmm. um, as long as it's not something that makes her stand out. Mm -hmm. Um, the, there's the aspect of is she making the situation worse mm. by doing that so mm. it's you know for the short term it makes her feel presentable but in the long term it's actually making it worse yeah and the third one which I think she really needs to concentrate on is why is her confidence based on the way that she looks mm. you know her confidence should be more than that it's who she is as a person yeah um, and I think she needs to be working on that and thinking about you know, all, everything else that she is, mm. um, it, it, it shouldn't be so superficial. Mm, absolutely. No, thank you so much. I think that's probably um, an, an answer that you've given and advice that you've given that a lot of 
young girls and women can actually take a lot away from. We've actually come to the end of our show, so thank you so much for joining us um, once again. Thank you to, to our viewers for uh, joining us once again on Heart to Heart. You can always email in with your questions, any problems, any issues that you might be facing at work or university or at home or at school um, on heart to heart at safiotv.com. Thank you once again for joining us. Assalamu alaikum.